What we have here is half a cow, clearly, that has got one, two, three, four windows. And the windows allow me, the tutor, to see exactly what the, the student is doing. So, for instance, if you look at that bag with the blue deposits, uh, the, the blue deposits are lubricant that allow the, um, uh, the arm that inserts through that bag, inside the bag to allow, facilitate the passage of the arm. And then we have a simulation of the cow's uterus. So what we have here is this part, uh, which is the body, um, that's the body of the uterus. Here we've got the cervix. And then over here we've got the split, the two horns that they coil, they coil like that. And these little P-shaped, uh, would you call them P's? Yeah, probably, are the two ovaries. This is clearly uh, an empty uterus, if it were pregnant, that one of the two horns will start to enlarge because it fills up with fluid, what we call the embryonic fluids, that the embryonic fluids help protect the embryo, they act as a shock absorbent, they surround the embryo. And also there's a second bag, and that mainly consists of urine. So the calf is able to pee, uh, inside the uterus and all that pee has to go somewhere so it gets contained throughout the pregnancy in mammals it gets contained in the um, in the second bag um, this uterus is uh, empty the purpose of the Henrietta is uh, twofold first of all is to teach farmers how to artificially inseminate a cow and secondly is to teach vets as vets how to pregnancy diagnose cows we have been using it for both very successfully and the results are absolutely superb. Um, how do we know that a cow is fertile? There's many ways to tell that. First of all, by the sheer behavior of the cow. The cow is usually restless. She's ready to conceive. She's looking for the male to inseminate her, in other words. Um, and she would be going around uh, standing up quite a lot. Uh, she would be sniffing other cows. She would let uh, other cows mount her in, in here and she would stand. Normally cows don't like that and they would move away. Uh, she would, uh, at the beginning of that uh, fertile phase, she would be resting her chin on top of another cow, again indicating I'm ready. Um, uh, furthermore, you will have rub marks, as we call, parts of the skin and the hair being rubbed off in this region, that region and over here. And as she is permitting other cows to mount her, there will be mud marks, uh, a sort of dirt along the flank on either side. Um, it's quite a distinct behavior, and once you've seen one, you, you've uh, realized what it is. At the end of that behavior period, uh, at the very end, it's usually when the cow will release the egg is not during that period, it's at the end. And this is the difficult uh, guessing game that has become slightly easier with the onset of heat detectors. Those heat detectors are electronic devices that are attached to the cow's neck or are attached to the cow's front feet. They're called pedometers in that case. Um, frankly, they look like the feet ones. They look like the tags that we see on occasions, people who are released from prison to wear on their feet, the angle tags and, and, and all that. Uh, so once we determined when the fertile part of the cycle is, then we can carry out an artificial insemination, as it's called. Artificial because it's not natural service. The bull, for instance, if the bull were to serve this cow, the, you would sort of take the cow to the bull or the bull would be running with the cow. As soon as the bull is the best, really, inseminator, to be frank and honest, um, the bull then would identify the bulling cow, the cow would allow him to mount her and he would uh, then do the what's called intromission. Intromission is the insertion of the bull's penis inside the vagina and then we have the ejaculation and the deposition of the sperm where the sperm goes if now we're looking inside the cow the vagina is here the penis comes here and the, all the semen four point four between four and six billion sperm cells per mil a total of between 10 and 20 mils 
in some cases, uh, is deposited here. Uh, and then on this end is the uterus. So what happens then is the sperm will travel through the cervix, through the opening of the cervix that's opened up because the cow is bullying through the cervix and then inside the uterus. Um, so what will happen then is we will have over here the cervix is what we've just been looking at and let's say the heifer is or the cow is ovulating on this side is about to release an egg or has released an egg on this side the egg will be slowly migrating through this tiny little tube that we call the fallopian tube or salpinx and the sperm will be then be traveling in the body of the uterus and through chemical signals It'll know whether to turn left or to turn right, or in this case it was right and left, uh, and, and it'll travel all the way until it gets near uh, the egg. We can't see what actually go, goes on, we can only feel. One arm is, is through the rectum and it's palpating, it's feeling where the cervix is. So roughly as my left hand is. Um, and, and then blindly, blindly, I won't be able to see this. I'm trying to find the middle of the rosette on the cervix that I'm just pointing out with my thumb here now. I'm trying to find, I, I wouldn't be able to feel that in, in, inside the cow in, for real life. So I would be probably following these movements here trying to blindly find uh, the, the middle of the cervix. And the main difficulty we have is the gun, the tip of the gun, with the loaded um, sword straw uh, that's now inside the cow. Very often it hits this periphery, this, this area around the rosette, that's called the pouch. And by hitting the pouch, um, we think we're inside the cervix, but we're not. We're in a dead end, and the more we push, it might move slightly and give us the false impression that we're in the right place, but it won't move beyond a certain point. Delegates that have been through the course, they, they resemble the cervix like a sausage. It feels like a little sausage. So what they do is while we're holding our hand steady, the hand that holds the AI gun, we need to wiggle the sausage until it loads onto the AI gun and with the tip of our finger here, the minute the gun comes out of the far end of the cervix, that's when we stop. And that's a sign that we're in the right place. All we have to do now is pull the trigger. By pulling the trigger, that will deposit the sperm in the right place. Also, we could deposit the sperm here, just between the third and the fourth ring of the cervix. And uh, once we've done that, we pull out, let the cow go, job is done. Okay, so we are removing any dirt from uh, the uh, vulva. We want uh, a clear, a clean, um, uh, sort of entry for the AI gun. Sometimes we rest this piece of um, uh, we rest this piece of um, paper towel at the end of the vulva, and then we need to enter, put our arm inside um, the animal. If I run gently my hand over the cervix, I feel that sausage-like structure slipping through my hand left and right. So, I've identified the cervix, I know I'm there, so what I need to do is raise it if I can. Very often, that is not easy, and all I can do is just push it with my uh, thumb. Um, so, I'm in fairly good control of the cervix. I will pull the loaded gun out of my back, and I will enter it and I will enter it through the vulva initially and through the vagina and then with my little finger over the cervix I am looking to feel the tip of the gun. Ah, there it is, just, just about there. I can feel it advancing. Now, the difficulty is 
what we need to do is we need to make sure that the gun doesn't go in the pouch. I think I'm in the middle of the rosette, pretty sure. So I'm now wiggling the cervix. It's beginning to get a bit tight. The, the cow, inside the cow, would feel like that. So I am wiggling and I'm pretty sure I'm going through the cervix. There we go. We're in. Success. So, we're in. And in that case, I pull the trigger. I push the plunger. The sperm is in the right place. I pull this out. I pull my hand out, my arm out. Another happy cow, another happy farmer. So, perfect. So, what this function does is, first of all, warms the inside of the cow to give you the sensation of, um, of the real thing. So, it brings up the temperature to 37 degrees as you can see there's thermostats here and sensors and what have you but furthermore it will barrel the rectum and that is one of the difficulties we have when uh, we are artificially inseminating cows the difficulty with that is um, the difficulty with that is that sometimes air is being sucked in the rectum and that blows it up like a balloon and in that case it's quite difficult for us to feel uh, what we've got Shuma It's quite tough now. I know where the cervix is roughly. Yeah, I can feel it here, but trying to pick it up and trying to inseminate the cow, uh, that's, that's quite difficult. That is the tough thing. And this is very often what happens in the cow. Uh, she is nervous. Uh, heifers particularly uh, do this, the barreling, uh, they suck air um, and um, it makes our lives much more difficult and then you really clutch into stalls. It's, uh, it, it, you're trying to do your best you can to, to guide the gun, the AI gun, um, the, the AI catheter to where you think the cervix is. Um, the best thing to do very often is to wait. Uh, and allow those that air to be extracted and um, allow the rectum to um, relax and take you back to the normal so to speak configuration so I think that's what I will do in this case it's one of the best things we've done uh, it does help the delegates um, uh, to understand where they should be how they should be handling the cervix what the difficulties are it helps us, me, the instructor, see what you're doing wrong, what you're doing right. And it's also better for the cow because the less we handle the live cow, it's fairer on her. Um, I mean, artificial insemination is for the benefit of the cow, really, uh, for the benefit of the herd, for the continuation of the species. Uh, and it's a good thing. But it's about um, uh, utilizing technology uh, for the benefit of everybody.